If you want to make your significant other angry, if you want to make your children cry, if you want to look like a cruise dunce, if you want to be considered to be a cruise noob, a cruise dummy, well, ignore what I'm about to say because I'm going to share with you 10 mistakes that cruisers make. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I am your host, Tony, the Oracle of Cruising, here to impart wisdom unto thee so that you do not make some of these cruise mistakes. Cruise mistake number one, being a dummy when it comes to travel documentation. Nothing will end a cruise quicker than not having the proper documentation. Do you know what documentation is required? Are you traveling with a passport? Has it expired? Are you traveling with a birth certificate? Is it official? Do you have your travel documentation on you or did you pack it in the suitcase? This will end your cruise quick. It's a simple formula. Know what you need, make sure that it's not expired and make sure it is on your person. Keep that stuff with you. Don't make that cruise mistake. Cruise mistake number two is having your cruise disrupted because you expose your personal data. You get yourself hacked by using public Wi-Fi without using any kind of technology to protect yourself. Fortunately, the sponsor of today's show, Private Internet Access, can help you avoid this mistake. As travelers, we all have a list of essential things we take with us, passports, cameras, laptops, the right clothes, medication, and more. But one thing we often don't think about is what we can take to protect our privacy and safely use the internet when we are on the road. Private internet access is a virtual private network or VPN for short. It safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. It hides your internet activity, data, and IP address from prying eyes. With support for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, and Android, private internet access provides coverage for all your devices for a single subscription fee. Be it your mobile device, laptop, tablet, and more, Private Internet Access has you covered. It's easy to install and easy to use with a simple tap of the button. You can connect to a server in the country of your choice and safely and securely use the internet. Some banks, credit cards, and even streaming services like Netflix will use geofencing to limit who can connect to their services and from where. With Private Internet Access VPN, you can connect to a server in your own country and still have the access to the services that you need. And on the flip side, Private Internet Access VPN gives you access to things in other countries that you may not have at home. Case in point, I've been trying to rewatch Downton Abbey, one of my favorite British dramas, and it's not available on Netflix in the US. With Private Internet Access VPN, I'm able to connect to a server in the UK and I can watch my Downton Abbey once again. Private Internet Access is the world's most transparent VPN provider with over 30 million downloads. They never record or store your data. They have 24 by seven customer support and they allow you to try the product risk-free for 30 days with a money back guarantee. PIA a must for me and I would say any traveler out there, you need your data protected, you need your privacy protected, you need to connect to essential services. PIA VPN gets all of that done. Private internet access has a great offer for you by clicking my link in the description. That's just $2.03 a month, and you also get four extra months completely for free. Thanks, Private Internet Access, for sponsoring today's show. Now that we've got your data protected and your ability to access your favorite shows while on the road, let's talk about cruise mistake number three. It is not putting your mobile device in airplane mode while you're cruising. This certainly could be a costly mistake. We live in a charm time where our mobile networks have been well built out across the globe. That means for many of us, when we travel abroad, we can connect to our regular service provider and have access to cellular service, to SMS text messaging. We can have access to data. However, there are some parts of the cruising journey where those networks include a roaming fee. And if you did not do the research on the front end and you find yourself roaming on an unincluded network, 
Well, guess what? Your cell phone bill is going to be all jacked up. I had an interesting situation happen to me when I was cruising in Europe. I was using my mobile device in a port that was included in my service plan. And when we left that port, I didn't even think about it. I did not put my phone back in airplane mode. And all of a sudden I got a text message from my provider that said, hey, it looks like you're cruising. We do not cover cruising from place to place, even though there are networks there, you're going to incur a fee. You may want to jump off of the network. And I was very thankful that they sent me that text message, or I think I would have you know, incurred a big expense. This is one of those things where the technology is super helpful, but if you don't do it right, it could be super costly. Put your phone in airplane mode. Mistake number four that cruisers make, they overpack or they underpack. This is one of those Goldilocks scenarios. You want to get your packing just right. I've seen packing play out in a couple ways. I've seen folks go for maximum effort. Any outfit they've ever enjoyed wearing in their life, they're going to stuff it in the biggest suitcase that they have. Then they're going to drag it with them onto the cruise ship. And then that way they have a variety of choices. <laughs> I've also seen the opposite play out, a minimalist approach to packing, where somebody will just grab a couple t-shirts, maybe a couple pairs of underpants, a couple shorts, and maybe a pair of pants, stuff it in a backpack and jump on the cruise ship. Both of these approaches come with inherent risk. The overpacker has the challenge of having to lug all of that stuff on and off the cruise ship. And they also add a little extra stress into their daily activities because they have to go through all of their clothes choices to decide what they're going to wear. And then the minimalist runs the risk of not having what they need on the cruise. This is my balance plan for packing. It's got two components. Number one, pre-plan your outfits. Go ahead and map out how many days you're going to be on the cruise ship, map out how many travel days that you have, and go ahead and choose the outfit that you plan to wear on that day. Now that outfit should be the most comfortable, bare minimum thing that you feel like you will be able to wear on that day. And if you supplement that outfit with something that's warmer, that you can use multiple times, a light jacket, a heavy jacket, depending where you're going, something that gives you rain protection, light rain jacket, heavy rain jacket that you can use with multiple outfits. You should find yourself in okay shape and not overpacking. And the second part of my balanced packing approach is to minimize the amount of footwear you have to take with you. Figure out what you can wear for your most formal experience, figure out what you can wear for your least formal experience, and then get the most comfortable shoes that you can find because you're going to do a lot of walking when you're on a cruise ship. But yeah, you don't want to end up with a whole suitcase full of shoes. I've seen that happen before. If you can somehow get your shoe footprint, wink, wink, shoe footprint down to one pair, two pairs of shoes that are multi-use, you will find yourself with everything that you need for the cruise but without burdening yourself with taking too much stuff with you. Let me say one more thing about underpacking. Don't let yourself in an attempt to not bring too much stuff with you on the cruise ship. Forget some essential things. Don't let yourself skip on things like pain medication, seasick medication, stomach medication, of course, any of your regular medications, basic first aid kit, band-aids, neosporin, that kind of thing. You may not need those things on your cruise. However, if you do, they're gonna cost you more on the cruise than if you pack them with you. So get the smallest kits that you can bring so it doesn't take up a lot of space in your suitcase, but make sure you have those things so that if you do need them, you don't have to overpay. Mistake number five that cruisers make is sometimes they are overplanned and sometimes they're underplanned. You certainly want your cruise to be enjoyable and sometimes when you pre-plan every moment, every activity in your cruise, it becomes a burden. You miss out on that opportunity to find some relaxation. And so I would caution against heavily over planning your cruise days, especially your sea days. But the risk of not over planning is the risk of under planning. There are a lot of cool things to do on a cruise ship. There's a lot of things to do at cruise ports. And if you don't give any thought to that at all, you may miss out. The technique that I like to use is every morning when I get up, I like to look at the daily planner for the cruise ship. I like to highlight a few things that I would like to try to do, but I don't force myself to do all of those things. I like to strike the balance between 
being planned and being unplanned, but I certainly don't want to miss out because I was uninformed. Strike the balance between being overplanned and underplanned and you will not make this cruise mistake. Mistake number six that cruisers make is they do not prepay for stuff that can be prepaid for. I'm thinking specifically gratuities, internet, drink packages, excursions. Most cruise lines will discount these items in an attempt to motivate you to pay for these items prior to getting on the cruise ship. And you may be saying, well, if these cruise companies are in it to make money, why would they give you a discount at any time? Well, the reason is this. They want you to spend money before the cruise. They would like you to be done spending money before the cruise so that you've forgotten that you've spent money on the cruise. And then that way, when you get on the cruise with a fresh new pile of money, a fresh new wallet, if you want to think of it that way, that you'll spend more money then. So it's kind of a win-win situation. The cruise companies get passengers on board that may be willing to spend more money because they've already paid for the essentials. And of course, it is beneficial to the cruiser because you get those essential services at a discounted price. Don't sleep on prepaying for essential things prior to getting on the cruise. Number seven is a cruise mistake I have often been guilty of. I've been guilty of it because I like to be spontaneous. I love the spontaneity of life and sometimes I have refused, refused to research the port stops that I am going to. I get to a brand new port stop and in my mind I'm like, I'm just gonna take it as it comes. And well, I have run into some issues with that approach. Issue number one is sometimes I don't have a good idea of what to do in the port. I don't know what the hot to do's are, the best to do's are. I'm just out there willy nilly last minute trying to make a plan, trying to figure out what I'm going to see. And that has caused me some stress. Another, I wish I would have researched issue that I ran into when I went on my European and UK cruises is knowing what currency is used in what country. On my UK cruise, we went to several countries. Some of those countries used pounds, British pounds, and some of those countries used euros. Fortunately, in the world that we live in, not a super big deal. In most of those situations, I was using my credit card to pay for things. However, there are certain circumstances where a vendor may only take cash or you wanna give a cash tip. Then you end up in a situation where you don't have the right currency to do what you need to do while you are on your port stop. Little side tip here, most of the cruise ships will exchange money for you. The exchange rate may be a little higher than if you got it done in another place, but the convenience factor is there. So make sure you bring some cash with you, know the currency of the place that you're going, and if need be, exchange some currency on the cruise ship so that you can do what you need to do at your port stop. The number eight mistake that cruisers make, I've actually seen this one occur a lot more lately. For some reason, cruisers are not going to their safety briefing as soon as they get on the cruise ship. We live in a magical time in cruising where no longer does the whole ship have to gather at one time to do the safety briefing. We have been given the autonomy. We have been empowered to manage our own safety briefing. And that does put the onus on us to get that safety briefing done. This has to be completed by all of the passengers before the ship sets sail. And uh, it seems crazy, but almost every cruise that I've been on lately, late into the afternoon, really close to sail away time, the loudspeaker is blowing up with the captain and the cruise director and everybody that can get a hold of the microphone, imploring people to go and complete their safety drill. Don't make the mistake of not getting your safety briefing done as soon as possible. As soon as you get on the cruise ship, do it. Do it! Cruise mistake number nine, and if you thought this wasn't a thing, just spend some time on social media. Not getting back to the cruise ship on time. Going to a foreign port is pretty exciting. Going and seeing new things is pretty exciting. Of course, time is limited in those foreign ports. And if you do not keep track of the time in foreign ports, you run the risk of missing a cruise ship. I think many first time cruisers may think that being a little bit late back to the cruise ship is no big deal. The cruise ship will not leave them. Well, au contraire, mon frere, the cruise ship will leave your butt at the pier. Please, please, please do yourself a favor. Give yourself plenty of time to get back to the cruise port. Do not run the pier. Do not miss the ship. The ship will leave you. Let me say it again for those in the back. The ship will leave you if you are not on time. Number 10 mistake that I see cruisers making is they do not get travel insurance. Insurance for anything seems like a scam. Am I right? 
nothing is a problem until it is a problem. And then all that money that you spent on insurance seems like money well spent. There is story after story out there of people who did not get travel insurance, had some sort of calamity on their cruise, and now they are on the hook for life changing money. They had to take a helicopter ride that cost them 50 G's. $50,000. This is not the kind of money you want to be on the hook for when you can buy insurance in advance, travel insurance. There's a lot of good options out there. Do not travel without travel insurance. And if you do travel without travel insurance, know that you are gambling, gambling with your financial life going forward. Please just get yourself some inexpensive travel insurance. And look, I got one more, and this may be the most important mistake not to make on a cruise. Don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk to your fellow cruisers. Don't be a jerk to the crew members. Don't be a jerk by breaking the rules. Know your limits. Know what's expected of you on a cruise ship. Uh, maximize the excitement and the fun that you're having on a cruise, but do that without being a jerk. Is your significant other still mad? Have the kids stopped crying? Have you made any of these cruise mistakes? What's something we could add to this list? Uh, the comments are open for your feedback. Did you dig it? Do you want more information from this oracle of carousing? Well, I am here for you. Uh, subscribe, notification bell on to stay up to date. Another big shout out to the sponsor of today's episode, Private Internet Access. Get yourself a VPN. Link is in the description. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is Tony for La Lido Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido.